Hello, Vintage Story Knowledge Seekers. Today, I want to talk to you about food and cooking. My first playthrough, I almost quit because the food drain is real. Then I got a cook pot, some veggies, and meat, and I was one happy Drax. Let's make some food. As with most of my videos, I'm going to show you two setups. The first is the basic, get it built, cooked, and into your stomach. And then we'll look at a fancy one, and then we'll look at a really cool one I did in my single player save. Cooking in Vintage Story is not as complicated as you think. In this video, I'll show you the basics of making your first real meal. Here's what you're going to need. Fire and a fire starter. Firewood, of course. A cook pot, bowls, and hunger. Yep, that's the easy one. Vintage story food in the very beginning of the game basically is just you finding a berry bush and eating the berries right off the vine, right? And this goes on forever and I think it's something that you'll use throughout the game, but I think the big turning point for me especially was cooking food, making food, because it curves that hunger and really opens the game up in such a big way. And I think the basic cooking is just starting a fire, and so we'll create some firewood. And then we'll come in here and put a little piece of grass down, a couple pieces of firewood. Oh, now we've got a fire. Let's move it, to, let's move it here so we can see it. And now I think the, the most basic thing you can get is a cattail root. And these have saved my butt so many times and cooking them will be great. But I also think just even finding the first couple of animals, getting some raw meat and getting this fire going will change your life as well. This is, this is the most basic kitchen right here, right? Got some firewood stacked up, a little fire rolling, and the meat is cooking. And it's gonna take a couple of minutes, and when it's done, we'll have something that will fill our hunger bar a little bit more than the berries, and make it so we can run around a little bit more out there in the wilderness. The next level of the basic kitchen involves clay making. I made a great video, you can check it out here. It'll tell you exactly how to get these really cool cooking pots and bowls. This is the big step forward in the game. And I, I ran around a lot in the very beginning without doing this, and I think this should be first on your agenda. Secure a safe place to live, immediately get some clay, and get these cooking pots and bowls going. This is the hack they don't teach you at Vintage Story School, but I'm telling you, these two items will make your life so much better and really just make the game sort of level out in terms of like that fight for food. So let's cook our first meal with our cook pots and our bowls. So pretty straightforward. You take the cook pot in your hand here, put it on top of the fire pit. We can grab some wood to get it going. And then we're gonna put some food in. It's still warm from the last fire, so that's why it started right up. I'm gonna put a couple of pieces of meat and a couple of pieces of turnip. And you can see, oh wait, it's not doing anything. All right, so you can't do that. Oh, we can do this. We'll, we'll create one serving of red meat. So I think the, the thing to remember when using this fire pit is that it will tell you what you can create here. And if we pull this out, you can see it stops. If we come here and put in a turnip, it doesn't work. If we pull this, it'll say, oh, one serving of turnip, cool. So you, you've got to kind of get the combinations right. And, and that can sometimes be frustrating, but I think you can do twos of things and fours of things. As you cook more, you'll realize what ingredients you can mix and match and which ones are best. Uh, I think an all meat stew is pretty good. All right, a little bit of time has passed and it appears as though we have some yummy food ready, pot of cooked food vegetables, turnip stew, so we can grab a bowl and we can scoop it right out of there and you can see that, it, you can see it's steaming a little bit in my hand there. <laughs> I just love this game. And then we're gonna eat it. Yummy. And if we look here, we can see that there's 0.7 servings. You can actually just throw this in your bag and carry it around with you. It's gonna last, it's still hot, so it won't tell you when it's gonna perish out, but like, it, it's gonna last for a couple of days. So in the meantime, Let's make another meal and something a little bit more exciting this time. One of my favorites. Uh, this will create six servings of red meat stew and boiled cabbage. Mmm, boiled cabbage. This number is the most you can put into a cook pot. Six, something to remember. These kind of combinations of meat and vegetables is great because it's going to fill you up faster and keep you full longer. All right, it's finished. Looks yummy. There's a pot of cooked food, six servings. 
I'm going to show you another quick hack to keep this, uh, well, as fresh as it can be out here in a dirt environment. I would dig a small hole here. And then I've made a storage vessel. And we're going to place this storage vessel in the hole. We'll open it up. We're going to place this food in here. We'll place this food in here. And we'll place this here. And you can see it says four, four days. Now what we can do is we can put a block over the top of it. I can leave it open. And we can see now that it's six days. And once this cools down, it should be about six or seven days. And this was rotting out, so it's got a couple hours left in it. So I think this is the vessel underground hidden is a very, very easy way, a little hacky, to store your food in the very beginning. Here's my simple kitchen. I hope this helps. Let's go take a look at the fancy one. All right, here's my more fancy setup. Th this is the kitchen I build almost all the time now. It's simple, inside, straightforward. You can work from standing right in front of it, which I think is such a huge thing, and I, I don't think it could be overlooked. I have three vessels here storing food, and I've got them under the shelf hack so that they're storing food for a very long time. I have some water for making pies in my pie station. I have storage for these crocs here, easy to grab, and then crock up the food. I've got wood in a crate, and I just, this is, I learned this from one of my community members, such a really cool hack. Stick a crate in the ground, fill it full of wood, and you can pick the wood up as you need it and put it in. Way more than stacking it up. I've got a little bit of counter space, two cook areas. It's just such an easy, straightforward way. I love this setup, and I cannot stress how easy it is to get it up, get it running, and get cooking. A special note, I stopped carrying a torch to free bag space, so I've been building these little torch holders and putting a torch here so that when I need to light a cook fire, there's always one available. It's right here on the wall. I can grab it, light the fire, and put it back. So here it is, my fancy functional kitchen. I love it. Here's a bigger kitchen that I built on my single player save. You can see it's the same basic design, just a little bigger, a little more open space. You can see that I put the pie making station behind me here. Water, storage, I've got a bucket, table. And then we've got lots of storage up top here for bowls and crocs. A couple of different areas to cook. The storage underneath, two things for firewood. Got a display case here. My patented put the torch on the wall because Drax never has a torch. I like building in big open spaces where there's lots of room to move around. I think there's a little honey here getting ready to make some ale. Here's a bigger, fancier version of the kitchen. I'd love to hear about your kitchen adventures. Please leave me a comment down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. The video is over. Now it's time for you to do your part. Follow, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.